Welcome back to another episode of the We Live to Build podcast. It's funny how many people I talk to that started a company to solve a problem they encountered where they found no other solution, or the solutions they found didn't do a good enough job to satisfy their need. Today's guest, Sam Starnes, is no different. Before getting married, she was a wedding photographer, so you would think she enjoyed weddings. But after regretting her own traditional wedding, she wished there was someone who could have advised her to find the strength within herself to fight for the wedding she really wanted. That led Sam to start her own company, which specializes in advising, planning, and leading couples to experience a custom elopement-style wedding with under 25 guests in the most beautiful parts of the world. With nearly a decade of wedding experience, Sam has traveled to numerous states and countries for elopements to jumpstart the transformation for real change to encourage anyone to become their authentic self. So without further ado, let's talk to Sam about her experience in becoming an entrepreneur and how she's learned to run her business. Welcome to We Live to Build. My name is Sean Weisbrot, and I'm an entrepreneur, investor, and advisor based in Asia for over 12 years. Join us every week to fast track your personal growth so you can meet the ever increasing demands of the company or companies you are passionately building. Time waits for no one, so let's get started now. So before we get started on where you came from, why don't we tell everyone real fast what it is you do right now? Yeah, so I am an author and primarily an adventure elopement photographer. And a lot of people ask me, what the heck is that? And it is essentially a photographer who specializes in helping capture and create those amazing wedding days that have very few guests and they're usually outdoors in epic places that really represent the couple. Where are the places that you normally go to? Um, I travel all over the globe, but some uh, frequent locations are Alaska, Glacier National Park, Oregon, the Northern California Redwoods, and Hawaii. Did you have anyone in your family that is entrepreneurial? Did where did you get this sense that being an entrepreneur is, is something that's that could happen? Uh, so funnily enough, my parents are not incredibly entrepreneur, entrepreneurial oriented people. My mother is a med tech at the local VA. My dad has done a lot of different sort of jobs. He has raised exotic birds. So he has owned his own part-time side business. But this really came out of a want to build something because I realized from my own life that there was a place in the market for an adventure elopement photographer. And I had wanted that for my own wedding. And I realized that other people want that too. And so I sort of carved my own place in this niche because of that. You had a wedding experience that wasn't what you wanted it to be. So what was that wedding experience what, what was it like and why was it not what you wanted it to be? The time that we were engaged was about six months. And I had brought up to my now husband and my family and stuff that I wanted to elope. And of course, as one can imagine, there was a little bit of blowback. Ultimately, I fell victim to those societal expectations and those norms that people want to follow for weddings. And we ended up having about 100 to 120 person wedding on my parents' ranch. And a lot of that time was spent with me organizing things. And I didn't have a day that really represented me or our relationship. And my husband, Brian, had kind of realized he wanted to elope a little bit too far down the planning road. So it was a larger wedding. And ultimately, I didn't really enjoy myself. My husband didn't really enjoy himself. And we didn't really get to spend time together on the day. And we really, really felt the day didn't represent us. I'm sorry you got to experience that. I haven't had a ceremony. But I know that with my wife, we also had the societal pressure. And in Vietnam, I think the pressure is even more because it's about giving the parents face. How long from when you had these feelings of, I'm not happy with this, until you decided to make your own company 
to help other people to have the experience they did want. So I had done part-time wedding photography for several years up to that point. It was only a couple of months after our own wedding that I decided to focus and niche down into just elopement photography and just photographing intimate weddings and adventure elopements with 20 to 25 guests or less. It happened with one couple who had hired me a few months after my own wedding and they were having some planning issues and you could tell that the bride was stressed out and we had talked and I I asked her what's going on she just vented and said I wish I wish we could elope at a waterfall with like five people and I I told her why why don't you she's like we can do that I said yeah and I told her my story and that was what changed everything for me realizing that there were a significant amount of other people out there that felt like I did in regards to their wedding did you have any fears about getting into this business oh yeah 100 percent. and I think I think those fears are good to acknowledge and good to at least have in the beginning because I come from a small town and every photographer here is a jack of all trades, a generalist. So they do newborn, senior photos, weddings, headshots, uh, real estate photography, anything that would get kind of referred their way. And with the income, the average income of our town and the traditions of our town, it was very concerning that I wouldn't be able to have enough clients and referrals to support a full-time alone my photography career. That was a significant worry. I ended up that shift in mindset of realizing that I'm able to serve more than just my town. And now I have one couple in the past three years that has actually booked me that has been a local couple. Everyone usually comes from at least 180 miles away, if not across the country or across the world. Great. How long did it take you to get over that fear? I think it's really important to acknowledge that fears can kind of evolve. It took me probably a good year year of really, really making my foundation very, very solid with search engine optimization and experience and and all this stuff. And now it's it, the fear isn't, I guess, necessarily a fear. It has evolved into, man, I wish, you know, I wish I had more local couples, but it's not even a concern at this point. What was the hardest thing about starting your company? I think that was probably it. The getting over the fear of how am I going to make money how am I going to be successful with this niche that no one in town seems to understand? There's a lot of resources about how to actually start a business, you know, filing your articles of organization, that sort of thing. I worked in a law firm before, so I was already familiar with a lot of the business and contract law. So that stuff wasn't scary. It really was finding the clientele for a particular niche that hadn't blown up yet. And, you know, back then I I came in right after after the ground floor was laid for adventure elopement being a niche. And now it has just exploded partially because of COVID, but because it has gained more traction just in general. What were you the most excited about in starting this business? One of the things I was excited about was getting to create art in epic places that really resonated with me. Uh, Some of my favorite places are Alaska, Glacier National Park, the California Redwoods. And because I am knowledgeable in those locations, I'm able to share that and people see that. And that's where they end up booking me for primarily. So yeah, the traveling and the creating art in these amazing places that I love. You were talking about the first year and how you were creating a solid foundation. So what did year two and three look like? If the first year was just scraping by year two was probably four to five hundred percent more in terms of bookings you know if I went from let's say two or three elopements to 10 15 and that was probably roughly around what year two was and then the the percentage sort of slightly leveled off um, in that parabolic fashion. Those years were a steady increase in not only clients, but more inquiries, as well as a broader range of locations. So it wasn't just Oregon anymore. It was, oh, you're an expert in these locations. Do you travel there? And it was a lot of spreading awareness of how much I do travel. And so how do you manage all of the travel? So how couples book me is depending on where they want to go, I provide certain collection options, package options for them that include my travel. So I've calculated all the travel out based on certain areas. And with that, I book myself uh, and everything. I also am sort of partially a planner for 
them. So I help them with, hey, do you need Airbnb recommendations, um, all this stuff. So it's sort of, you know, a way for passive income because I have an Airbnb affiliate or associate uh, associate profile. So I can earn passive income that way. With the travel, they don't have to worry about me at all. And I sort of block out my time during the year in regards to what location is best during what time of year. And so I might go back to locations um, multiple times a year, but it's not so spread out. They're, they're very much in chunks throughout the year in order to maximize my time. It also serving them as well, because I am very clear in this is when I will be there because this is the best time of year to go. You don't want to go during another time. And so it kind of serves a lot of different purposes for how I set up travel. And how do people find you and what percentage of those people are from word of mouth? For me, word of mouth is actually one of my least documented ways of referrals. I have really great SEO and I'm working on shifting my SEO currently uh, because I currently have a trademark and that needed to have some adjustments on my website. I have great SEO. I also have a great evergreen content usage with Pinterest and reusing those over social platforms. I have a very active blog. So a lot of people find me via SEO and Google. That is my highest rank referral for inquiries, as well as my highest booking referral. You know, word of mouth is actually very, very, very low. And the booking rate for the few word of mouths I do get is very low. And I've found through research and, and tracking all this stuff, it's because elopements don't tend to have all those guests there that actually get to see you interact and work in person. And I found that for traditional wedding photographers, word of mouth is a lot higher because of that. On top of that, eloping is not nearly as popular as a traditional wedding. And so even though they might think you do great images, if you don't photograph their type of wedding, you know, it is what it is. On top of that, I have found that at least in my niche, word of mouth referrals are typically looking for a certain price point, And I usually tend to be out of that price point. It's cool that you recognize that and found another way to get people to come to you. Do you do any paid advertising at all? Or is it mostly just through the content and, and the social media? Uh, the vast majority is through content and social media uh, and you know my website. But occasionally, I'll do Google ads or targeted Facebook ads and retargeting through several different landing pages and freebie offers that I have. That typically happens between November and February, which is what's called engagement season, at least in the United States and North America. So what is the most important thing you've learned through all of this so far? One of the most important things I've learned is service. My business is not just about providing an elopement day and photos. Eloping is not about the photos for me. And I say it on my website. Uh, so I want to be able to serve them by helping them craft a day that is representative of them. That is something that will transfer into the rest of their lives by, you know, feeling more empowered and feeling more self-aware and being able to grow in who they are as a couple. And so that's, that's my why. And that's why I want to be able to serve them. And I've found that finding your why and being able to serve in that capacity capacity while we always want to price ourselves profitably and and talk about the finances and be very aware i have found that that has been a primary reason of why i am so successful financially because it isn't selling it isn't you know pushing something it is genuinely wanting to serve the couple and you know giving them options to you know upgrade their album collections or upgrade their wedding collections their their photography collections and if not if that's not the right choice for them totally great but looking at that and looking at that you know add on aspect as a way to serve them and genuinely believing that that has helped helped me and been the most important thing, I think, in order for me to be successful. I totally agree. Understanding your why is important. I don't know if you've heard of Simon Sinek. Uh, he's a well-known speaker and he has a book called Start With Why. And in it, he talks about people don't care about what you do. They care about why you do it. They care about how you do it. And so, yeah, I think that's a very valuable lesson for anyone to, to learn. Like in any business, I'm sure that you have 20 competitors around the United States, but people come to you because it's about them, where the other people probably focus on the day. They say, this is, it's about the elopement. It's about that. And, and you say, no, it's not about that. It's about you. And so that's a very powerful differentiator that you, you make very clear. That's your USB. Yeah. And I will say that, you know, people think, oh, adventure elopements, 
it's just a few people, but it's it's actually way more than um, you know twenty. There's there's absolutely hundreds, if not thousands, of elopement photographers that just want to specialize in elopements, and so that's really how powerful the why is, like you said. Have you hired anyone as of yet? And if not, are you planning on it? Currently, I have a part-time office admin assistant. So she does things like is an admin for my Facebook page. Uh, she will optimize my images on my website. She does packing for me. She just does odds and ends, admin errands, things that I can offload to her um, so I can do more specialized things. I also have a social media strategist and someone who makes sure that my social media is active and posts and schedules for me. And I also am taking on an elope your life uh, my trademark team member uh, i'm in the process of onboarding someone after their final sort of callback audition in order to be able to serve couples do you have plans to hire anyone else during this year or do you think more growth will be in 2022 i think this is a really good solid position for 2021 i don't want to make any huge jumps without sort of feeling out a couple more things but um, having another team member on is definitely not out of the realm of possibility or or, um, hiring more full-time team members. Cool. So beyond just hiring people, I guess what do you what are you looking forward to this company looking like in the next five years? I love images. I love being able to do what I do, and I think I would still do that in some capacity. But there is a desire to sort of diversify and expand on top of eloping your life, and you know that that empowerment and that individuality and that confidence that comes with standing up to people and eloping and doing something that's outside of society's norms and, and traditions and expectations and really applying a love your life to other things. So having unique Airbnbs to offer, or, um, you know, I have a book out right now and I'm actually going to be speaking uh, and giving a TED talk in April. So diversifying the, the trademark into multiple different concepts that overlap. And that's, that is what a love your life is, but I want to be able to manifest it in more ways. I don't know why, but when I hear that name, I just think franchise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it sounds to me like you could let people pay you to train them in your why and use your name to do things with your style, but their time, their ambition. Yeah, that's absolutely possible. And, you know, who knows? that might be a thing in the future. Elope Your Life is very franchisable, expandable in that way. What's something you've learned recently that you're either looking to implement or have already started implementing in your business or your life? You know, I think this might be an answer that's not given very commonly, you know, because everyone wants to talk about business hacks and these organizational hacks or, or outsourcing hacks, you know, and while I have recently outsourced my editing so I could spend more time doing other things, something that I have learned that is very important is managing work-life balance. And so, you know, I have got an office, so I, I'm not working from home. I, I go into my office with my assistant. I come home and yes, while well, I do occasional things at home, the balance allows me to be my best self in order to serve my couples and my clients. So the the knowledge that you can only serve someone to only a certain capacity if you are not, you know, 100% energized and your your cup is not 100% filled. So take care of yourself in a effort of conscious selfishness in order to be able to perform the best of your ability for your clients. That makes so much sense. I know a lot of people follow Gary V. And I have to say, I've said this once before, I'm going to say it again. I can't stand the guy because all he promotes is not work-life balance, but rather forget your wife, forget your kids, screw everything, just hustle until you die and you will make it. It's just not a good way to live. Yeah, agreed. He has great points, but ultimately I feel like it's a slightly skewing towards the, the toxic work level. What's something I haven't asked you so far that you wish I would ask? Oh man, that's really, really difficult. Um, questions I get the most are what are some favorite elopements you've done? What are some like crazy cool places you've been? How to get these people in the mindset of, oh yeah, this is possible on your elopement day. You know, a lot of it is sharing your expertise and a lot of people are really afraid to give things away, give information away, because that's sort of what they feel like is, you know, why people hire them. Um, and it's taken me a long time to figure out, give it away, because when people see you giving away all this information, they think, oh man, if this is the top-notch information she's giving away, imagine what mind-blowing information she's holding back for just her clients. When I, I give this information away on how to elope in Alaska, what kinds of things you can do in Alaska, Glacier, Scotland, Hawaii, and 
getting people to dream and I mean, overshoot your goal, absolutely overshoot your goal because then people are going to land in something that's really, really cool in the middle. It's sort of akin to how three package or four package pricing structures are overshoot knowing that if you land that, that's super awesome. But you know, somewhere in the middle is is where you want to be. So uh, always trying to inspire people on what is actually possible. Great. Well, you're free to answer those questions for yourself if you want. I keep coming back to a few that just have really interesting activities because of who the couple is. Uh, we visited a reindeer farm before we hiked up a mountain and visited an abandoned mine. And we went to a glacier the day before because they had multi-day coverage. Another couple did a three and a half hour horseback ride on the island of Kauai and then went and visited some beaches. I have a couple that is potentially interested in going to Alaska this coming uh, this coming winter, next winter, 2022. And they are interested in doing an Aurora Borealis sort of event with dog sledding. So I tell people the sky is literally the limit. Helicopters and airplanes, I next week, a week from yesterday, I will be in a hot air balloon at sunrise over Moab because a couple wants to elope and include a hot air balloon in there, in their experience, in their adventure. Well, Sam, it's been fascinating talking with you. I really appreciate your time. If you like Sam and you want to learn more about her, check out samstarns.com as well as elopeyourlife.com to check out her book. Again, her TEDx talk at TEDx Roseburg will be in April. If you liked this episode, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us because it really helps us out by getting the algorithms promoting us to new people who might enjoy what we're doing. Entrepreneurship is a marathon, not a sprint. So take care of yourself every day. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam.